We are building a model railroad during several episodes and in no time we will have our dream landscape. Now we can start building our houses. In the last episode I have started to work with this honeycomb building board. I have outlined the size of the building on the board and right now I'm using it as a pet. What I have planned for now is the Bavarian train station Weissenbach that you can see here. I want to build it now and I have already started to prepare some pieces between the last and today's video. The windows are already glued to this piece here. I did the same with these transparent film windows. The base plate is also ready. So the first floor could be glued entirely if we want it. But there are still a lot of parts laying around which have to be glued and crafted together as well because this does not look anywhere near like this picture. Let's have a look at the instruction manual together. I really don't know how long it will take us to finish this together. Maybe we can finish it together in this episode. Maybe I will continue on my own later on. But we will start together now. That's the way you get a chance to see and learn how this is done. Now let's have a look at the instruction manual. This were the first steps. It is the same principle as this. You can easily break them out of the injection molding frame. From time to time you will see such ugly breaks at the side. In this case you can simply use a nail file and start to file down these parts until they are smooth. The parts can be glued better then. So they fit together better. That's a good trick. I simply used my fingers to break the part out. That's one way to do it. Another possibility is to use a cutter like this or to use a crafting knife. So each one of the three options is successful. Here you can see for example that this window was broken out by hand. You would need to file it down a little to get it smooth and level. That way the windows will fit nicely in the house. First window is finished. There is still quite an excess end here. Break it off by hand and file it down afterwards as well. So this piece will fit later on as well. Apart from that it's fine. We have an access end here as well. We will file this down too. You might ask now is that really necessary? Do you even see a difference in the end? But filing down all of these pieces has a great advantage. That the parts will fit exactly when we insert them to the other parts. They fit without any kind of bending them around later on. Let's check the instruction manual for the next steps. The transparent film for the windows is glued. The structure of the first floor is finished so far. Right here in the middle, here you can see it nicely, is room for a lamp. We will insert a lamp later. But we will not use a light bulb like in the past. We will use an interior illumination instead. It's not from Faller but from Fissmann. This will go right there. And then we have such a floor lighting or a house illumination where we can glue every single window. We will add that later. We will leave that in here for later. Right now we will glue this first side part here so that we get a feeling of the whole building. Each step is labeled. You can see E, F and G. That's the next step. And these are the corresponding parts D, E and D, B and F. F is this part here. Each part is labeled at the side so you can see what number they have. Now it is time for some gluing. It doesn't really matter where you start. I will start now at the front here at the side. I create a glue groove all along this part. I hope I'm doing this right. Uh, let's start with the first side. I will know for the next parts whether I did it right or wrong. Now I hold it in place for a couple of seconds. I guess I used a bit too much glue in the wrong place. At least that's what it seems to me. I will do it differently with the next piece. Uh, this time I will start at this piece and glue down here. This way the glue is only where the parts make contact. So at this side and on that side here. They do connect at the back sides sometimes as well. So I would apply some glue here as well. And there too. 
Now that's okay. You can glue this side here as well. And now right to the house. Press it on there lightly to close it. Try not to get too much glue on your fingers unless you want to have your imprints all over your facade of your building. That's already looking very good. All of this looks very new with bright and shiny colors. We can patinate that later to let it age faster. We can use certain powders or colors together with a dry paintbrush in order to make the house look older. That way everything looks more realistic when the buildings are not brand new but weathered. But that's the way they were produced in the injection molding process. We file this down a little more, that way it will fit better. This will help us to make everything look more realistic. We don't need much glue. We can do that quick and easy. Just a little bit of glue here and there. That is a special glue for plastic by Falla. It's the right glue for this job. Now a little bit more here at the side. I'm using too much glue actually. You don't really need that much. A little bit is enough for it to hold. So one side is still missing. Just a little bit of glue down here. All right, you can look around at the same time. This building is made by Falla. Falla is a very well-known manufacturer. Other manufacturers are Kibri and Vollmer and Auhagen makes very nice model buildings too. The company Noch also makes houses. You have two major differences. One option is the injection molding process. That's what we have here. So the parts are made with a lot of plastic. A more modern, newer process is the laser cut process. Paper or rather carton is used for that. A laser is used to cut out the parts. These parts can then be glued together as well with a sort of wood glue. Right here we are using a plastic glue. Just press that on to make sure everything holds tight. You have to be patient, not quite there yet. It is still a bit loose here. I'll press from both sides. This is the afternoon or evening chill out exercise. Building a few small houses, all right, that is done. Let's have a look at the instruction manual again to see what we have to do next. But first I should reseal the glue. The next project is the second floor. Here are also a lot of windows. We need these parts right here. Here we can see the numbers 9, 16, 9, 15, 9, 16. You can find these numbers here at the site. I have already cut out the number 9, 15. Let's see which part goes to the top and which part goes down. Uh, this edge goes to the side and down and which way around. The outer part this way around. Okay, no wrong, it must be this. No wrong. Ah. The outer part is that way around. Okay, no, wrong. It must be this way. The window ledge goes up this way. For now, I just put it on carefully to get an orientation. Gluing is done quickly, but removing it, that's causing trouble. That's why I put them on first to check if everything fits before I glue it. That's looking correct so far. There is one more. Now that's finished. Next item is the number 916. Let's check over there what we can find. And here it is, 916, 915, 915. So 916 it is. Do we have more of number 916? There is 915, that's the one in the middle. Here we already have that. Here is 916, 915, 915 again. Too many 960s, I guess. Let's see. Now these are number 916, now 16er. The best thing to do is to lay that out in a group to keep an overview of what you are doing. Here you can see these small numbers at the side. I hope you can see it. It is imprinted here very small. It is hard to see that in the camera. I place it like this. Maybe you can see it a little bit. So here are the numbers and I break these parts out now. I'll put these aside here. Now here is the 915. So put that over there. Here are more windows. Maybe something is duplicated or there are numbers left. You may wonder why, but the manufacturers sometimes use the same injection molding for different kind of models. For that reason, you may have, for example, one window more than you need. How many do we need? One, two, three, four. So we need four more pieces 
four pieces times two means eight pieces in total. Let's see if we find eight pieces. Maybe I made a mistake and I have already cut them out. Now this is number 16 here. It is not easy to see what's the difference between the two, between number 15 and 16. I'm sure we will find that out. That's a 15 and what's that? Ah, a number 16. Let's check if we have eight pieces. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one more, 15, 15, 15. That's our, that are all pieces with the number 15. More 15, 15, 15. I'm going a little crazy. It doesn't matter anyway, because I probably cut out the window already on the other side. Well, let's see what the difference is. Maybe we can simply use the number 15. Maybe we have a different size. I cannot see the difference. They fit in there. I place them in there now and also right here. And then we will see if the other size will fit. Maybe. I just did the wrong way around and glued in a number 15 here. So much for numbers. You have to focus on that a little and see which piece fits where. Uh, one is still missing, so I take a number 15 out here and see if what would fit. Maybe they are identical. Let's see. And that fits. Lucky me. They are identical. We take the file. This one fits but that still has to be filed. Let's get this part real smooth. You can see these parts later on. File it down here on the top and here as well. It is always the same principle. Break out the pieces, file them until they are nice looking and smooth without any ridges. This one is already filed. We will file this one more time. Now we have one, two, three, four. Next, we need the seven, 13. The big question is, which one of them do we need next? That I'm breaking out, it's number seven, 13. That's correct. I thought they look right, but this is always better to check the numbers again. Sometimes they just look similar. Sometimes they just look similar. I did not glue that yet. I'll just try and see if they would fit in the backside and if it looks good. And then you can already see our window facade. That's what it will look like. The next step is the transparent film that needs to be glued on there from the back. That way we create our window effect. I will prepare that right now. One, two, three, four. How many do we need? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. All right. Three times four equals twelve. Uh, we could have calculated that. Now one, two, four, five, six, seven, nine, ten, and one, two, three, one, two, three, two, three plus two more. We'll break it out. The plastic pieces here as well. That's all done. I'll hurry up to prevent the video from becoming too long. You can take as much time as you want to. This is supposed to be a hobby, an exercise for patience and chilling out. It's not a competition on who's building a train station the fastest way. It's not the Olympics. So take your time, file down these parts as well. Let's not file down too much, otherwise the plastic will turn white and we lose this nice gray color. They all look good. Next tool we need is scissors. We will use the scissors to cut the transparent film in the right size. We have to make sure we don't cut too much, otherwise we won't have enough for our other windows. Always be a little fraggle with it. If you cut off too much, you may help yourself with some household or kitchen foil. You could do that, but for now we will try not to use too much and make sure it will be enough. That fits. I can glue that now. I only use four little drops of glue to make sure I don't have too much of it. If I use too much glue, you will see that afterwards when I put the transparent film on it. And I will get a lot of glue on my fingers, so it's smarter not to use so much glue. Uh, you can also use tweezers and insert these pieces with the tweezers. But if you only see tiny drops of glue, it will be absolutely fine when you use your fingers. Let's add a tiny amount of glue here and there. You will always get some glue on your fingers. So just make sure to clean your fingers before you insert the pieces to prevent the facade from getting dirty from the glue. That will look much nicer afterwards. 
When you buy pre-built buildings on second-hand platforms, you can always read nicely built. That means there is no visible glue on the building. But we are building our own one. That way is much more fun. One more building, 12 in total. I hope you can see everything clearly. I did not check if the camera is in the right position yet. But it's looking good. Otherwise, you would complain in the comments. <laughs> Theoretically, you can weight it down with a weight or you could press it together with something like this. But that's a bit of an exaggeration. Best if you let this rest a little to let the glue dry evenly. So don't hurry too much, otherwise the glue won't dry fast enough. I got some glue on my fingers, got to be careful now, clean them up a little. I would guess it takes about an hour to build a house like this. If you take your time, an hour or two, it depends on how often you do this kind of work. If you have people doing a building marathon, building two or 20 houses over the entire weekend or one evening, that's a lot, I guess. If you want to do that, I will keep you busy. Building a house throughout the afternoon or evening is quite a nice occupation. You can also do it together. The first person starts with the first floor and the second person starts with the second floor. That way is also fun. What I'm looking forward to when it is finished is to make the house look old. I don't know yet if we will do this right in the next episode. But I have already organized a powder especially for patination and weathering. You apply it on the houses and that way you can make them look older. An alternative is watercolor. Uh, you can take black or gray color and let it dry almost entirely on your paintbrush. If you paint your house then, it will lose much of its brand new character that's very nice and good looking. Another idea is concrete paint used for all kinds of roadwork systems. You can find all kinds of paint from Noch, Faller and also Heki. It is a kind of acrylic paint or varnish. They work very well for all kinds of patination purposes and weathering. Just use a nearly dry paintbrush and go over the house. We need a little more glue here, it's not enough. Now we have inserted the window. All right, we let that rest for a moment. That was the last one. We turn it around and press it tight. We do that with all of them. We continue with these pieces. Simply apply a small amount of glue and insert them on the window. The less glue you use, the cleaner it will look at the end. You really don't need a lot of glue with a window like this one. Two drops of glue are absolutely fine. You can place them diagonally as well. So apply the glue exactly there where the fingers are not. I'll try different methods. Let's see if that is already firm. Best to press them tight a little longer, then you will need less glue. That should work now. And if I'm wrong, just use a little more glue. But that's looking good so far. It is also possible to apply the glue here, that way you can let the windows fall in place. You could do it that way round as well. You can also apply the glue here into these ridges. That also works fine. Best to try out different ways of working. Then you will find out the best way to insert the windows in here and which way they hold best. There are some options. You will get better at this the more houses you build. Less glue is less mess. So I will use only a few drops. Then it should hold in there tightly. Press it on a little bit or weight it down a little. I have now explained a little more in detail. So it took 20 minutes for just inserting the windows. But it was important for me to show you how it's done exactly. And it is not a sprint after all. It should be fun. Those are the last three ones. The next task is gluing the platform. So we will still have a lot to do. I think we will postpone the interior lighting project to the next episode. We do not have enough time left. It will depend on how fast I am now, whether we will start with the interior lighting or not. I finished to glue the last pieces. The next thing I want to do is the transparent film. I have the transparent film right here. We have two options now. The first one is the lazy version. You simply cut a piece of transparent film in the exact size of these complete part. I will take my scissors now. The next option is the more precise one 
you roughly mark the size of the windows on the transparent film and then you cut at these positions. I'll do that right now. That way you create smaller snips of transparent film and you don't need to glue all of the area between the windows. I'll try it out right now and I'll start cutting a few pieces. I cut a little bit too much here, the window looks broken now. Might add some charm to it. Same basic principle here as well. Less is often more. For this I use a tweezer, otherwise I will smear glue all over the windows. It's like collecting stems, a very filigree work. I cut a little bigger on purpose, that way I leave enough overlapping transparent film to apply the glue to. And I'll apply the glue up here and down there to prevent any glue from running on my window panes. I even remove a little bit of glue and move the whole window a little bit, to make sure no glue will get in contact with the window panes. That should hold, let's continue with the next film. I start up here and continue down here, that's done. And now the third and last one, perfect. I'll show you one more time, you can finish the last windows on your own. I'll cut the transparent film in the same width as here, same length as well and now I can cut my three window panes. Now we use the tweezers again and of course the glue. Apply a little bit of the glue here and there, the windows don't have to be straight. If you cut the film bigger than the actual window size, you will be fine. Only thing that's important is that you don't see the edges and that everything holds tight. A typical mistake is that you take so much glue that it runs on the window pane. That's really a shame, it looks not really nice and we can do that better. And make sure you don't use too much glue. This drop here was way too big. Now I'll cut the next piece of transparent film. I cut it bigger, just a little bigger, you will not run out of transparent film. There is enough in there, don't worry. We don't have too many windows left, but it is a very big train station, lots of DIY fun. I'll have a quick look on the clock to check how much time is left, I want to show you something different. I will finish the last window later on. These windows will be part of the second floor of the train station. We will have three floors in total at the end. You can also see it on the picture here. We are at this point right here. I will finish this complete front up here on my own after this episode. At the start of the next episode I'm sure the train station will be finished. And then I will take care of the interior lighting. We can light the interior with LED lamps. We can also install a house illumination that way. Every window will be separated. I have that already prepared. That's what that looks like. Such boxes are mounted on the windows from behind. The LED will be connected here right at the top. That way you can light a single window. That is a really nice effect because not the complete train station is shining bright. Instead, you can simulate that only in this certain room the light is turned on and in these two rooms the light is turned off. To make it really nice, you can use the black transparent film to make sure that every room without lighting will be completely dark. You will only see the curtains and light will only be in certain windows. I'll show that you in the next episode. That's also a very clear trick. That's also a very clever trick if you use only one light for the entire train station. You will only have light in the windows and nothing will shine through the plastic pieces. But we want to light up every individual window. That way we get much more light than if you use only one light for the complete train station. Plus we can turn on and off the light in single rooms and we will be able to control all of that digitally with our mobile station. We can turn on and off single lights instead of just turning on all the lights at once by connecting it whether the lights in the second floor will be turned on or off. We will have a look at this in the next episodes. Now have fun doing it yourself, the next episode will be about interior lighting. Have fun, until next time.